you know, Rick and I started this podcast over a year ago and we did an episode when mass adoption. And we, we, we joked at the beginning, like when taco, I know it's a pun, but this, this encompasses what mass adoption is. Like we're trying to reach the everyday people and crypto has this mentality of just complete anarchy. And how can you be an anarchist, but at the same time you want support from banks and financial institutions, no one's going to join, of course, your, your, your party. It's, it's not going to happen. So there needs to be some sort of bridge. But referring back to McCann, because if you look at their website and you look at all the partnerships that they have, all these brands have successful messages and they have, like you look at a MasterCard, for example. And I think that that's probably most analogous to Cardano, not in the sense of what they're doing, but it is a financial rail for people to use and spend money. And they're advertising to you and I, and they're also advertising to small, medium and large enterprises. And I, and I, I envision that Cardano is going to be utilized for multiple subsets of people. So you're going to have the small, medium, large enterprise, and you're also going to be targeting the unbanked, you know, so there's a wide range of people that you have to target your message to. So once one, sorry, once, it, once we get that message or once we get that direction from McCann as to where the brand needs to go, what's the next step? Because these companies here, Coca-Cola, MasterCard, LinkedIn, I mean, they and have Microsoft endless, too. and Microsoft, they have endless budgets to push commercials, mm-hmm. whether that, yeah, yeah. And they have endless budgets. Uh, they, their pockets never run out and they can push media, whether that be through the television or through print. They have various ways to, to market. So after we get this brand refresh, what, how, do we, how do we get that ball rolling to the next step? How do we, is, is that too far to think of? Or is there a step, is there a plan to, to push that even further? It's a bit too far and we haven't gotten to that stage, but my personal opinion, so once we have an overall narrative and specific messages for different kinds of audience that is based on the overall narrative, my personal, obviously our budget is not endless. And my hope is that our community will actually jump in and help us to reach the audiences that we cannot reach. There were only, you know, slightly more than 20 people at the Cardano Foundation. And hopefully that, and they will also take part in this process to tell us, okay, this is the message that we've developed. And they might say, well, let's tailor this message and localize it to this particular market or to this country or to this language, um, you know, the speakers or this industry. This is, that's why community is important in this exercise. When we come to that stage that we will look for their guidance. It might be a specialist, um, you know, from different industry that you might say, I come from an insurance industry and this is, your message should be tailored to this insurance industry and it should sound like this, or I come from Uganda and in Uganda, your message should be a bit different. It says the same thing, but slightly differently worded. So it should be localized and customized because one thing we know, one size doesn't fit all. While Cardano wants to be the global platform for everyone, we also understand that everybody has different needs. They have different reasons to adopt it and we need to tailor our message to that audience and this is my personal opinion but we haven't gotten there yet um so uh where the phase the current phase will end uh will come will conclude in march and once that's done we will look at all the results um and then reassess what needs to be done and how at and what direction and we will be another um, meeting you know, with the executives and uh, all the stakeholders, and then we will take it to the next level. So, but my personal opinion is that communities should also be involved by providing their specialist view from you know, the industries they represent, the countries they represent, and different groups they represent. That way we can give all these overall narrative and, and the different messages and say, here, how would you tailor it and customize it in your industry, in your country, for your group? Yeah. You know what I like about this? You're taking a one step at a time approach, which is good because it's, how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you're standing? And Absolutely. that's what this will do. And I, you know, I hadn't thought of that before. I just thought about it because I'm listening to you telling me this stuff and I'm thinking, oh yeah, 
you know, so you got to know where you're standing before you know where you're going. How are you going to make a vision for where you're going? You know what I think the hardest part about your job would be is defining what is my product that I'm providing to this, uh, to, to the user. You know, it's not like I'm buying a, a taco or I'm buying a coffee cup or I'm buying a service. Uh, it, it's, it's more nebulous. It's kind of vague and hard to define. It's a vision. It's a, yeah, it's a vision and a way of doing things where like with Microsoft, it's easy. I can buy their product and put it on my computer and I know what I have, but, uh, yours is kind of a bigger thing. Like when you walk into a meeting, I can't imagine what the kind of questions they ask you, you know, at these at corporate level meetings, um, because it's like, well, what, what is the product or what is the solution? Like if you're offering solutions, solutions are a product, mm -hmm. training is a product, financial operating systems are products. But I guess if it depends on what problem you're trying to solve for the, that particular group, that particular customer, we got to start somewhere. You got to it's, start it's a tough saying, one. What are we and what are we selling? What's our product? Absolutely, our product? And, and and that's why the product managers will also have a say in in this exercise, um, and also business development people, because ultimately people who go and 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 see these, uh, you know, business developers and product managers. I, I also want their vision. How do they see it? I want so uh, part of so w one of the things that I'm doing. Um, I know we call it Project Renovar actually at CF. Um, it means Project Refresh in Latin. And um, getting by these different various groups within the ecosystem and outside, uh, buyer groups, seller groups, and all you know developers, academics, just finding exactly. What do they want? Also, what do they want out of this too? Because, as I said, it's very important for us to be inclusive. It's inclusive, also, you know, inclusive opinions as well, and hopefully, kind of boil this down to a one line, a one sentence narrative, and one line and, and several one liners. So, and sometimes it's very difficult because, you know the pitfall is like you always want to please everyone but once you realize that you can't please everyone that you can't please all different uh fragmented audiences you just go with what works and what actually what supports your overall mission and your vision baki that's a really good point you know towards the beginning of my personal youtube channel i did a video saying what is the elevator pitch for Cardano? So basically saying that, how would you talk to uh, the average person about Cardano? And people that have asked me about Cardano or have told about Cardano, you realize, wait a minute, there's a gap to try to even explain the project. You start explaining it and then you're like, wait a minute, this is too advanced right now. Let me back up. And you often start using like Bitcoin as a reference, as a starting reference and then working your way up to Cardano. And the person's completely lost by the time you even get to proof of stake or even mention the word Cardano or blocks or anything like that, um, or stake delegation. So creating that one line or creating a sense of understanding for the average person is, is completely necessary. Because it's, it's not necessarily that we're building um, I mean, we're building extremely advanced products, but they need to be communicated to everyday people, especially if we're trying to be the financial stack. You walk into Bank of America or Chase or any or Wells Fargo, they don't they don't tell you how the ATM works, but it just works for you. You can go up to a teller. The average person can go up to a teller, withdraw money from their account. It's relatively easy, even though the steps behind it are a lot more complicated. So I think that's wonderful. Um, yeah. So <laughs> and. That also keeps me, you know, up at night because, yeah, it's it's quite a big um, undertaking. And um, a couple of days ago, a colleague of mine told me, like, you have to think that you are leading off what could become the world's biggest and best blockchain project, and you are in uncharted territory, and you're just kind of bulldozing your way around. And I thought, my God! And I suddenly I felt very overwhelmed. 